All right, we're back to part two of the uh, Bell Siphon troubleshooting. Now, <clears throat> this is a half inch standpipe, and beneath that is a bushing that reduces from half inch or three quarter to half inch, and then uh, from there there's three quarter to one inch threaded, which goes into my bulkhead fitting. You have to bear in mind that all of that is going to take up space. The sandpipe is not the same size. So you want to screw your male adapter in. You want to screw all bushings in or, or slip fit them all in. And you want to get a measurement. And you can see that the sandpipe height is about seven and three quarter inches. Okay. So that standpipe is probably a seven inch piece of PVC. And this is going to, number one, this assembled height, okay, from the bottom of the grow bed up, is going to be your water level. Right there you can see the water level. I have the bell out right now and you can see I have about an inch, inch and a half of, of hydro tin that is, is not uh, getting wet. Okay, and, and, and as a side note, <clears throat> with your bell on, this would be, if the siphon never kicks over, this is what I call your equilibrium. You would just drain, drain, drain like that, and that's when you would adjust a little more, count 30 seconds, what I was talking about before. Now, you have that measurement, seven and three quarters, and I'm going to uh, pull out the tape. I'm going to go into the inside of this bell and I'm going to find the lip where the cap sits on and I'm going to measure that. That's exactly eight inches. Okay. That length of pipe, <clears throat> as far as what I've found, eight inches with seven and three quarter inch sandpipe is going to only leave a quarter of an inch up here at the top, which is in my estimation, from what I've read on the Aquaponics Wiki and through experience, is too small. And this bell will cause problems. This will eventually cause, it may run for 12 hours, it may run for 24 hours. Uh, you may have good luck with it, but see these bells, they rotate as the siphon kicks on. It, it, it rotates and jumps around in there. And um, when the siphon's breaking it, it jumps and skips and all that. What I'm saying is you need a minimum, and this uh, the Aquaponics Wiki says this as well, you need a minimum of a half an inch between the height of the standpipe and the height of the cap, the, the height of the bell. And that is to get both water and air in there and a good flow. Now, let me, let me point out something. You know, I was really surprised. These bell siphons, they look like such a simple device, but they, they have quite a few little ins and outs. I'm going to put the camera down real quick and grab this, this bell here. You can see this bell's larger. Uh, Should have having technical difficulties. Should have prepared... Uh, I'm never gonna. I'm not gonna be able to get that out on camera right now. But you'll you'll have to take my word for it. That bell is nine inches long on the inside. When I measure <clears throat> this length here, it's nine nine inches long. So it's an inch and a quarter, and it's a two inch diameter pipe, not inch and a half. That gives more than ample flow uh, and, and space over there, and that bell has never, never failed at all. It has never given me a, a constant run state. Um, it also drains a little bit slightly quicker than the inch and a half. And I'll remind you, that's still the half inch. It's the same standpipe, it's the same bushings, the same uh, length of pipe and all that. And I would also like to add that that bell, that's why I wanted to pull it out, just to show you no tricks up my sleeve, but I can't. That bell has no air holes. Zero. Zero air holes. It has um, uh, one inch forcer bit 
um, holes drilled in the bottom like this. It would look like this, except two inches in diameter and no air holes. So you don't need air holes on your uh, on your belt at all. You don't need the put. You don't need the air hole on the top with a little piece of tubing. You don't need these air holes here because when the water comes down to the height of these and the, the water, the vacuum's drawing the water up, you're going to you're gonna create an air hole when it drops just below that, right? Again, I'm going back to the drain sucking, sucks air up through the slug of water. That's what, what I have found breaks the siphon more than anything you do on the bell. This bell over here, flawless. In fact, I had a problem when I when I made these two grow beds and I put the the uh, half or the two inch bulkhead fittings in the, in the bottom. I was drilling those out. One of them I went nice and slow and drilled through the plastic and had no problems. The other one I forced it a little bit <clears throat> and again I wanted to pull this out to show you. Anyway, I cracked the plastic on these on the tub. And this tub was 11 bucks, so I, you know, I didn't want to go just throw it out. So what I did was I put a bead of when I put the the bulkhead fitting in, I put a bead of silicone over the crack. Uh, you know, I'm on on the grow bed side, and uh, it cured. I waited like a day. <clears throat> so this bell is never going to sit down there squarely. It's always going to have a little ridge that it sits on. And when I was using a one and a half inch bell, no matter the air holes, no matter the configuration, no matter if my inflow was tuned properly or the, the rise to run on the, the pipe was um, fixed properly, that, this, one, this bed always created a constant uh, drain cycle. And until I threw this two inch bell in here with no air holes and started experimenting around, this was the one, if you remember, I was gonna put the loop vent on, but what happened was I didn't have enough clearance to put the loop vent in, and I would have had to put some blocking under my saw horses uh, to get enough clearance in there, and that just seemed like too much of a hassle, so I, I wanted to figure out what was going on. Um, so anyway, let me just drop this bell in here. You can see the water's just going straight over the sandpipe, but because the inflow is already tuned, as soon as I drop this on there, it's going to create a vacuum. In fact, I can just hold it there, and you can you can hear it creating a vacuum. Drop it in there, and you'll see it goes from drain to a big gush, and it's almost like no air. It's just a big rush of of water and if we look at the side here the MDF's in the way but it's gonna the water lines draining quickly it's it's already gone from there it'll come past that board any second there it is there we got a little bit of glare here there's the water line and it's gonna come down to here you're gonna hear the the siphon start to break up top through the bell and then at the very end you're going to hear a big gulp and that is from your your tailpipe or your tailpiece there's sucking see it moving Listen for that gulp. That's what constant run looks like. Gulp. Right there, you heard it. Gulp. And you can hear the, the water goes back up the pipe. This way. The air, the air goes through the slug this way and the siphon's broken when you hear that gulp. Uh, one, one last thing I'd like to point out. <clears throat> this design makes your siphon break uh, higher. So 
you want to use, or I'm going to switch to, a system like the Aquaponics Wiki has, like this. You use a piece of string, measure the uh, uh, circ outer circumference of the pipe, you divide by three, you put these little legs in there, that's going to make that a lot shorter. Um, so more drain, more fill time. <clears throat> anyway, that's that. Thanks for watching.